Hi everyone, it's Lara. Thank you so much for watching. Today's video is the third part in my DIY winter coat series. If you have missed the first and the second part, links are down below in the description box. And in today's video, I will be working on the hood and on the color for my winter coat. So if you want to know how I have done that, then please keep watching. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any further parts of this project and also any further projects. And now let's get into this. Let's have a look at the pattern for the hood. So I think I'm just gonna keep the white piece on the black one because it's easier to see. So this is going to be saw in around the neck and then here in the front is going to be two flaps that I will be able to close when it's really windy. And the hood consists of two pieces where you can see already the, fa uh, the shape. And then there is a long strip of fabric that is going to be in the middle. And I have already finished the hood made of faux fur so that you can see how the shape looks like once it's finished because then it's probably even easier to understand the pattern. So here you can see there's the strip in the middle and there's going to be the flaps that I will be able to close. But um, since it's a pattern I didn't have, I had to make it myself. I kind of drew the basic construction but this is too far in my face and you can see I have drawn, drawn a line already so this is how much I have to cut away from the fabric because otherwise the hood would hang too far it would go over my eyes and that's not really the idea so um, I will adjust it here then I will put the hood on and if this is enough fabric gone then I will make the same adjustments here on the velvet pieces before I start sewing it together. That makes it a bit easier. Um, yeah, you see that the forfer is gray and it's a really beautiful material. It's totally fluffy and soft. One thing I definitely recommend, once you cut out your pieces made of forfer, go to the sewing machine, set it to a zigzag or use your overlock, whatever and then just saw around because this is a mess. You have fall fur in the entire flat for days. And this is not even the worst because this is just a short fall fur. The hood is going to have um, an edge made of really long fluffy fall fur. This is a wonderful fabric. Here you can see that it is just a fabric. Um, but the thing is this hair is literally everywhere if you don't sew around with zigzag. So once I cut the piece out I had a handful of hair and then the first way was to the sewing machine. So this is some extra tips for you if you will use fall for for any project. This is definitely something you want to do otherwise you're gonna have to clean all the time and the fur is just gonna stick with you for several weeks probably also. So um, I will pin those pieces together. So this is probably also one of those things where I don't have to show every single step because it's kind of easy. Um, one thing I definitely recommend is pin the strip of the fabric from the inside. Um, and also as usual keep your pins at right angles. And uh, it is very important if you pin it from the inside to the one piece of the hood, pin it also from the inside to the other piece of the hood because this is very curvy. And once you pin something together that is curvy, what can happen is that sometimes the way how you put the other piece on uh, from one side can make a huge difference for the length. I mean, obviously my strip is too long, but if I would pin this from the other side, then the fabric would adjust differently. I don't know if this makes sense, but it's really, really important. You can try it out, um, pin the strip from the outside, like over the main hood piece, and then um, see how much of the fabric you will use. And when you would do it differently on the other side, you will see that there will be a difference. So it's definitely important. So. I always like to put the strip uh, from the inside on so that I, the strip is on the top and then I always adjust it nicely and then I pin it all the way down. But before I do that I have to 
cut here the fabric away and see how much I have to adjust the hood here before I start pinning it and sewing it together. So I hope that this was kind of understandable. I will get back to you once the adjustments have been done and once those pieces are pinned together. Now the next step. I have finished the velvet part of the hood. I have sewn it together and now I have turned it so that the bad side is facing upwards. So inside is the velvet side and I have inserted the fluffy hood. So now the velvet side and the fluffy side are facing each other. And here on the top is the bad side of the velvet and here the bad side of the faux fur. And you can see that I have already pinned quite a lot together and I have drawn also a line in order to show you what will I saw together. So let's have a look at the bottom part. So this is the piece that's going to go inside of the coat when I will sew it in. And um, this is the line which I have to sew through when I will sew the hood parts together. So I'm just going to copy the L shape here and I'm going to go in about half an inch, almost an inch. Now I think it's like half an inch. And what is important here is that um, this distance is the same on both sides. So it's always best to measure it. And it is always great to draw a line like this because then you have a guide when you're sewing and that's a lot of help sometimes. Also this length has to be exactly the same as on the other side, otherwise one flap would be a little bit smaller than the other one and you wouldn't want that. So I'm going to finish pinning also the other side together, the, for, it's, for me it's the left side. And then I will sew those pieces together with a regular straight stitch and then we will continue from there. Good, I have finished. Let me check if the length is precisely the same. So I'm just gonna align the seams and check if everything is all right. Looks good. So now I will take my scissors and I will remove here the corners because I want to have a nice edge so let me cut this away. Also I have to here cut in exactly towards the I mean to the point where the seam makes the pointy edge because otherwise that would be also too much fabric and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So now we will turn the hood. So I think this is nothing complicated, just basically turn it and wherever are some edges just shape it with any subject that works. If you use like me scissors be careful because you could damage the fabric. You can use something else that is kind of pointy but not sharp. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So, okay, we have finished a big part of the hood. Now we have to shape also this edge. You just have to adjust it nicely, but it doesn't have to be perfect because here there's going to be the super fluffy edge made of the longer fur fur. So I'm just gonna pin it here now in place just for the time being so that it would stay in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it here together because this is the part that goes inside of the coat and I just want to make sure that um, I keep the shape of everything right so that uh, the fabric wouldn't slide up or something like that. Okay, looks good. So I will finish the pinning here on the bottom and then we will start pinning the um, no, how is it called? The edge. Sometimes the words are just missing, but here you can slowly imagine how the hood is going to look like. So here are the flaps in the front. I have adjusted the piece of fur that is going to frame the hood um, because it was just way too wide. Now I cut it back. I again used immediately the zigzag stitch so that I wouldn't lose fur all over the place and I have pinned it to the hood to the hood and it looked good so now we are going to pin it to the hood together so let me take my finished hood here the first thing I always do is to find the middle 
and put a pin in it so that I know where the middle is. And I'm going to do the same here. That's about right. Okay. Now I will pin it about an inch from the edge and I will keep the pins at right angles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the fur faces inwards so that I wouldn't saw through the hair because that would look crappy. But if you do, you can still help yourself with some pin and kind of brush it over the seam and that mostly frees the hair. And yeah, I'm just gonna pin all around here. I'm going to keep the same distance everywhere. And the good thing here is fur is very forgiving when you saw. Uh, so if there is a line that is not perfect somewhere, it's not so bad because it's very fluffy and you won't see that that much. So once I come to the end, I will fold the end just a tiny little bit inwards and I'll put a pin here too. So now I'll pin a few pins here, put in a few pins here too. Look, almost all are green. So, and what I have to uh, make sure is that this distance, the part that has no fur on it will be the same on both sides. So when I will finish now the other side, this is what I have to make sure. So let me finish this first and then we will continue together. Although I think this is something I could show you. I just put the end pieces together. I find where the four fur ends and then I will make a line here with the crayon and then it's gonna be a bit easier for me to find it, find the right end. I don't have to measure like 50 times. So now I will finish the pinning. Okay, now I have finished the pinning and I will saw the fur on with a straight stitch. I will make sure that I keep the same distance, but so far it looks good. I kept the same distance from the edge of the hood, so we're good to go. Now I have sewn the uh, four fur in place and then I simply fold it over the edge. I will make sure that there are no pins from the inside and um, I will use the seam um, as a guide. It is quite difficult to see on the camera, but for me here in the light of the softbox it's actually quite easy. I'm not going to fold the fabric inwards because there is a zigzag and since it is really fluffy it covers the edge so you don't have to get crazy here. You can just pin it in place as it is. And I've done that already almost on the entire hood so that I can also show you how the hood looks like now. So this is from the front. And this is from the side. I think it looks really pretty. And you can fluff it up here. And yeah, I'm going to put it on now for you. Before I started working on my hood today, I made myself a ballerina bun. The reason for it is I like wearing ballerina buns a lot. And I wanted to make sure that the hood would fit even with my hair up. So if you like wearing your ponytail quite high or some special updo that is quite voluminous, like for example ballerina bun with a big donut in it, make sure you try a hood on with that hairstyle so that you won't be restricted in future. A super unimportant first world problem, but it is still nice to know I wanted to tell you this. So, and now I'm going to put the fluffy hood on. Oh, I can't wait for that. Oh, it's so fluffy and it is so warm. It feels so good. So, this is how the hood looks like now. Um, for most of the time, I am going to wear it like this, just open, but when it gets really cold and windy, I'm going to close it. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do here, if it's going to be just saw on snap or some snaps that I have to clip on with pliers. I, I don't know yet, maybe something completely different, but let's just leave it for now. I'm going to decide later. Um, now I will take the hood and I will saw this bottom line through so that I can remove the pins and then I will start pinning it to the coat together with the velvet collar. Before we continue, I need to mention one more thing that I almost forgot. 
I didn't tell you what to do with the inside of the hood. So I have shown you how I pinned the long forefur in place, but I forgot to mention that you need to hand stitch this line because the result is going to be much nicer. Or maybe I said it, but I just don't remember. Anyway, this is definitely a part for hand stitching. So for now, I'm going to leave the pins in because there is going to be a few more places on the coat that need to be hand stitched. So um, this is what I'm going to leave to the entire end. I like hand stitching while listening to some audiobook or to playing YouTube videos where it's just chit chat, where I don't need to look at the screen. So that's what I wanted to mention before we continue. So I have pinned the hood in place and I have put on the coat with the lining underneath it so that you guys can see it, how it looks so far. I will sew in the hood first before I add the color because I find that when you have that much fabric at once it's always easier to do it in steps. And one additional detail I have decided to make is that I will put my signature crest also on one of the flaps because I think it's gonna look pretty on the front. It's gonna look like all those Nordic, Nordic jackets. And now I'm gonna take it off and I will show you how the hood is pinned in. So here is the hood pinned in place. So here you can see the fluffy side and this is the inside of the coat. I made sure that the distance from the zipper is on both ends the same. And I also made sure that the middle of the hood uh, matches the middle of the back part of the coat. And now the pins are at right angles so I can keep them in and I will sew about that far from the edge. This is also where the seam on the hood is. And as usual, I'm going to use just a straight stitch. This is basically one of the two stitches I'm using today. Just zigzag and straight stitch. I have already sewn the color in place. I have skipped the part with the pinning because that has been pretty much the same procedure just like with the hood. And now let's have a look at a few details. So this is the velvet side of our coat. That means we need the velvet side of the color. And I have pinned and sewn it in place so that the velvet side faces the inside of the hood, the fluffy side. When I fold it up, what I want to see is the inside of the coat and the inside of the collar, so two bad sides. The collar has been sewn in uh, through the entire length um, of my neck till the end of the flaps. And here's also some extra fabric left at the end because we will need that for the seam allowance once we will start sewing the lining with the coat together. And another detail I want to discuss is those little triangles. The line around my neck is round and it is always best to cut out on a few places those triangles. Um, you should come very close to the seam but make sure that you do not destroy the seam and that will make it fit a little bit better. So that's the color. That's it for today. In the next part I will start sewing together the lining with the velvet side of the coat. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any further parts and also any further projects. Just hit the button above me or the button down below and you can also follow me on Instagram. Link is listed down below together with part one and part two and I have also listed there several playlists that might be interesting for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week with the next part and I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!